Let's animate a signature being written in After Effects. As you can see, I have the mechanical pencil and the signature. The signature is simply a stroke. And if we start with the mechanical pencil, we'll change the anchor point. Right now you can see that it's centered, so if I press W and rotate it, it will rotate from the center. So let's zoom in a bit, press Y to get the pan behind tool and drag down the anchor point to the very tip so it lines up with our signature. Now this signature can simply be drawn within After Effects. The pencil has been made in Illustrator and if you want to access the project file and the final animation and support the channel, you can find that link in the description. So to start this animation, we want our pen to simply follow the stroke or this line. And the way we can do this is by selecting the signature, opening it up, going to contents, the group and the path. Here we can copy that path, select the mechanical pen and press P as in position. And we can just paste that path onto the position. As you can see, it's not perfectly aligned over here, but we can just drag it down and After Effects should be able to snap it to our stroke. So if we play this back, we should actually have a pretty decent signature without, of course, any customization. At the moment, the mechanical pencil simply follows the line, but we actually want the line to be written on. So to do this, we can go to the very start, select the line or the signature, then we add a trim paths modifier, and this will basically just trim the paths. So you can see we have the start and the end properties. If we're just the end, you can see it's being trimmed from the end. So we want it to start at zero, add a keyframe, go to the very last keyframe of our mechanical pencil animation. Then we set the end to 100%. And because there's no easing on any of the keyframes at the moment, the pen and the line should follow each other perfectly. We can play this back and you can see that it's being written on. For some people, this may be all you need, but let's take a look at how we can push this a bit further, exaggerate the animation and make it a bit more dynamic. The first thing I notice here is that, of course, the speed should not be constant. Two things I notice here is, first of all, the pencil wouldn't move at a constant speed when you're writing a signature. You have the extremes where it speeds up, slows down, speeds up, slows down. And also another thing I notice here is that the pencil is just standing straight up and you want some rotation. Think about when you have a pencil in your hand, of course your wrist will rotate when you're writing and therefore the pencil will rotate as well. So let's first of all take a look at the points of times where we want the pencil to slow down a bit so we can add those keyframes. Right now, this entire pencil animation is only based on these two keyframes. And that's because we have all of these rove across time keyframes in the center. This means that we can only ease the start and the end point. So if we want to ease any of these keyframes in between, we need to make them into another type of keyframe. You can also see for each rove across time keyframe, it's indicated on the motion path. And the thing is, if you were to take all of these, deselect the rove across time, press F9 to easy ease it, the animation would go kind of crazy because the pencil would stop all of the time. So let's undo that two times. And now we want to take a look at this path and find the points of time where we want the pencil to slow down. If we think about this, whenever you're writing a signature, usually when you want to switch direction, so let's say you're drawing upwards and you need to go down, this is why you'll slow down the hand, speed up and slow down as you go down. So each time you change the direction. This means that we'll try and find the turning points on our motion path here. You can see our first one is right around here. So if we zoom in and take a look at that keyframe, we simply want to right click and then deselect the rover across time. And that way we just get a regular easy ease keyframe. Let's keep on doing this. You can see when we move down, the turning point is right here. Right click, deselect rover across time. We have one right here. Do the same thing for that one. And then we have the one at the very end here, but that's already a regular keyframe. And therefore we can just take that one and the first one and turn both of them into easy ease keyframes. If we play this back, you can see two things. First of all, the speed is a bit different, but it doesn't stop at these points of times that we have chosen. And also the line doesn't completely follow anymore. But for it not to be confusing, we'll just turn off the line or the signature for now and just work on the mechanical pencil. And before we fix the speed at the individual points, 
we also want to take a look at the rotation. That way we can adjust the speed of the rotation and the position at the same time, making it a lot easier to get them similar. So the thing is that if you think about when you're writing with a pencil, whenever you are the most down, the pencil is the most upright. And whenever you move your hands upwards, the pencil will start tilting a bit and it will tilt to the right in this case because we're writing towards the right. So to show what I mean by this, we have the pencil, we'll press Shift and R, add a keyframe for the rotation, and we'll just start it being a little bit slanted to the right. Then we go to the first turning point right here, and because the pencil is moving up, we have that tilt in the hand and we have that tilt to the right of the pencil. Therefore, we can again press W and get the rotation tool, rotate it a bit to the right, go ahead to the next turning point, rotate it a bit back because now we're moving down. Then we move ahead again to the next turning point and here we'll just move it a bit to the right and then towards the very end, a bit to the left. And of course, these values need to be adjusted. We can just easy ease them for now. Uh, but you can see sort of the main idea here, right? And you can push it as far as you want to, maybe a bit more rotation here. The thing is also that we don't want the pencil to move too much upwards and we can sort of deflect this by rotating it to the right. You can see right here, if the pencil was completely upright, it would go quite a bit out of the screen, but the more we rotate it, the more of the pencil we can see. But again, you can sort of see the point here. And before we fully adjust this to the final version, let's take a look at the easing. Because right now, we don't really have that dynamic movement. Basically, we just have that one flowing motion, which is fine for certain projects, but I want to push it a bit further. Again, whenever it changes direction, I want it to slow down and then speed up drastically as it moves in the other direction. Now, before we start with any of the easing changes, we also want to create a keyframe for each of the turning points on the signature itself, because of course we want the signature to follow along with the speed of the mechanical pencil. So we can turn back on the signature, press U to see our keyframes. Then we just go to the points where we have a keyframe for the position of the mechanical pencil. And we add these keyframes along the way. You can see right here, this is not perfectly placed. So we can just click it and hold it and it should snap into place. Go ahead and do this for the next one as well. So it just lines up, add a keyframe, and then we can select all of these keyframes not the rover cross time ones, of course, and press F9 to easy ease them. And we do this because beforehand the easing wasn't added properly to the pencil position. If we play it now, you can see it comes to a stop each time. This is much closer to the look I'm going for, but I don't want it to stop completely each time. I want it to maintain a little bit of speed. So let's start out by easing the position of the mechanical pencil. We can turn off the signature select the position and go into the graph editor. We want to take a look at the speed graph. As you can see, I have selected right here. And each of the dots you see on the speed graph represent a rover cross time keyframe. And you can just see if we adjust the main speed graph, they just stick to the main easing. The thing is here that you can see we have the speed on the Y axis and the time on the X axis. This means that the higher up the graph is, the faster the element will move. Therefore, whenever it's down here at zero in speed, it won't move at all. And that's what we're seeing each time the pencil stops. So we simply want to find the points where we don't want it to stop completely. And it's these three turning points in the sensor. You can see these three keyframes. And for them to maintain a bit of speed, we simply want to drag these upwards so it doesn't come all the way down to zero. We can take them, drag them up. And then if we play it back, as you can see, it doesn't stop completely, but we still have that fast and slow movement. We can push this a bit further if we want to. And I also want it to ease in a bit more from the very start. So if I drag this in, you can see we have some more easing at the start and then we have a steeper curve. So it accelerates faster. We can do the opposite here towards the end. So it deaccelerates faster and then eases out towards the end. If we play it back, we get something like this. We can also adjust the easing for the sensor keyframes, drag the handles a bit to make it a bit more extreme. So you can see it becomes a bit more snappy. And if we want it to not slow down as much, we can drag it up. 
And here is where you get to play around with it. But maybe we want to adjust a bit of the timing. The thing is that we simply copied the path and pasted it onto our position, and we just took the timing from that. So to adjust the timing, what we'll do is go out of the graph editor, we'll select all of the keyframes, and then we'll decide if we want it to go faster or slower. So maybe I want this to go a bit faster. I can hold down Alt or Option, click the last keyframe and drag it in, and you can see it changes the timing for all of it. Now, if I want to change the timing for a specific portion of the animation, I first need to figure out which one. So maybe here at the start, it's a little bit too slow for my taste. So I could either select all of the keyframes here and drag it in, or if I wanted also a bit more time for the next movement, I could just select these three keyframes and drag them a bit towards the left. And as you can see, now the next movement is a bit slower. And this is where we can go in and make all of the manual adjustments to the timing. And this is the same with the signature. You can see that it no longer perfectly follows along with the pencil. So how do we fix this? Well, there are a few ways of doing it. We simply want to copy the easing from one keyframe to another. To do this manually, you would go in to the first position keyframe, right click, then you go into the keyframe velocity, and you would go ahead and copy all of these different values, go to the next keyframe here, so keyframe velocity, and you would paste in the exact same values. Now this will take quite a bit of time also, depending on how many keyframes you have, it is a way of doing it, but a faster way is by getting the script UI panel called Ease Copy. You can find a link for that in the description, and basically it's a free script UI panel. If I go to Window after I have installed it, see I have it right here, open it up, and basically it's just a little handy tool where you can copy easing from certain keyframes and paste them to others. The only thing you need to keep in mind is that if you copy the easing from five keyframes, you also need to paste that easing onto five keyframes. Makes a lot of sense. So we can select these individual keyframes by holding down Shift. Then we can copy using the script and select the other keyframes. So press Ease. And then if we play this back, you can see that we have the same easing on both the rotation and the trim path as well. The next thing that I had in my final animation was the clip right here, rotating around the pencil in a fake 3D manner, as well as the top right here being clicked up and down. So to show you how to do this, I have this other composition where I have a zoomed in view of the pencil. Now I have two mats laid out. The first one is for the top part, and that's basically so the top can move into the pencil. And the next one is for the clip here, and you can see there is a bit of curvature at the top and at the end, meaning that when the clip is being cut out here, we have the curvature moving around with it, making it a better fake 3D look. So let's first of all map these things out. I'll start out by selecting the top pencil, searching for the set matte effect and dragging it onto it. Then I will go into the effects control. For the matte layer, I'll select the matte top and I'll do an invert matte. Here you can see I can drag the top up and down and this makes it very easy to animate. For the next part, I'll select the clip, search for the set matte effect again and drag it into the effects controls. I'll select the matte for the clip. For this one, we don't want the invert matte. You can see it's working as it should right here. And now we can all of a sudden see that we have the curvature at the top and at the bottom, meaning that if we zoom in and drag this over, you can see how it follows the curvature, making this cool fake 3D effect. So when you combine these two and you can move them around and animating them using mats, you can go ahead and animate those as I did in my final example, where you can see I use the click at the very start and the clip is also moving back and forth as the pencil is being rotated. So that's all of the tips and tricks for this video when it comes to animating a pencil signature. If you want the project file and you want to support the channel, you can go ahead and download that in the description. You can also find a link for EaseCopy, which again is a free script. If you made it this far, make sure to post a comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. You can also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to get notified when I upload future videos. That's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.